Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm Bill Harris, your host. As always, our discussions are centered around critical issues of life with biblical insight. There are so many questions about life, especially during these critical times. But the Bible has answers and solutions. Now, those of you in our home audience have been faithful in sending us your questions about life. And so we've invited a group of local ministers to review them, then go to the Word of God looking for answers to give you on today's program. And those ministers are with us in our studio. I'd like you to meet them now. First up, we have Pastor Jeff Kimberly of Neapolis Church of Christ, followed by Pastor Chris Langstaff of Bell Center Church of Christ, then there's Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist in St. Mary's. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Randy Davis of The Bridge in the Lima area. Gentlemen, happy to have you with us today. Glad to be Thanks, here. Bill. Good, Good to be here. A lot of stuff to discuss. I don't know if we're going to get to it all or not, but I think the first question I'd like to take up is um, one that um, a lot of people are quite familiar with. And um, this viewer writes in, I'm tired of all the COVID stuff. How's that for openers? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now that there is talk of sending kids to school this fall in masks, I am having a hard time keeping quiet about my frustration. I just don't think it's right. Please tell me how to be like Jesus. I mean, seriously, what would Jesus do? Because there seems to be a difference of, because I seem to have a difference of opinion on that. It says here that this is sent in by a mom of an elementary school child. So who would like to tackle that first? Yeah, I, I, think, I think one of the big issues we have around this right now is there's that COVID actually presents us with two separate questions. There, there's the scientific question of, you know, is COVID a threat to children? Is it a threat to vaccinated people? Is it yeah. a threat, you know, what is it? And then there's the kind of the political statement that goes <laughs> along with it too. And I think that's where we get into trouble. Uh, I think, I think Jesus would not make this a political issue. Whether wearing the mask or not wearing the mask is not a political statement of which side of whatever issue I'm on. And I think a lot of people who, actually I think a lot of people who, who both wear masks or have not worn masks are doing that as a political issue. And that I disagree with. Now, uh, I completely uh, agree that the science is spotty <laughs> as far as what the masks actually do. Uh, so I'm not sure I, I agree with, with them making it a mandate but in order to, you should never use your children to make political statements. So don't send them to school without the mask. If, 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 the, if the administrators, you know, for better or for worse, make a decision that they have to have them on, uh, using your, your elementary age child to make a statement about how crazy this is, that's not the way to go. That, 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 that's a step in the wrong direction. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Good yeah. point. I, I think all of us as pastors have probably navigated through the, the whole realm of, okay, do we continue meeting? Do we suspend our services? Do we provide masks for people? Do we not? Um, our church has decided that we're going to provide them. Uh, and if, if people want to take them, they, they can. And, and I agree with what you said about, about the political mm -hmm. statement. And, you know, w I don't think scripture ever tells us that we're supposed to surrender our political views. Sure. But, but as the body of Christ, I think we need to focus on how we interact with other people. Right. And in, in my situation in Bell Center, we're primarily an older congregation, folks that are a lot more susceptible to, to the virus. Uh -huh. so, so that I think has to govern how we look at, at not just the COVID, but everything. You know, what, what can we do uh, to help other people? And, and I agree with you. I mean, it seems that the goalposts are moving daily. Uh, as far as the recommendations. Mm -hmm. But then again, like Paul writes in Romans 13, we're supposed to respect authority. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's Romans 12. It's in Romans. <laughs> but, but we're supposed to submit to the authorities. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we need, to, we need to obey and follow those, those recommendations. And it puts us in difficult situations it does, like this. Sometimes that guidance is not clear <laughs> yeah. and shifts. Absolutely. Isn't one yeah. reason for that lack of clarity because the virus is new as we're going along science, the scientific community is learning more and more about the virus. Mm -hmm. If you recall early on, they said, no, it's not, it's not necessary to wear a mask. And then right. boom, all of a sudden it changed and right. you better put on a mask. And then, then it was two it's masks for a while. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah that, 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 that happened mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 
And so the, you're right, the goalpost is moving, yeah. and I think well, in then part it, then it because of that. Vaccinated, then it was, you know, death rate and all these things have all changed or come within the parameters they said we got to get. And then all of a sudden it's like you run across the end zone line and now you got 50 yards to go. Yeah. And that, that's what it feels like all the time. It's like you're running on a treadmill. Yeah. Right. But there was a very interesting point that you made, not using your child to make never, a political never statement. Never use children as political that's, statements ever for any reason, no matter what side you're on, ever. That's no. always wrong. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. So, but you're taking that to mean that if they say mask, and that, that they say we should have a mask, that you should put a mask you, on your child, you, you should, rather than doing the opposite of what authorities are calling Correct, for. because all you're going to do is make problems for your child that the child doesn't need. I, I, I personally disagree with masking kids. I don't see any reason to do that. There's nothing that I've seen, no report I've read that, that tells me the children are at any particular risk of this thing. So I disagree with that. However, to send your kid to school <laughs> to get them sent Here, home, here's the yeah, it's not helping. It, okay, but... Is the government using that to politicize the kids and use it against the parents? The parents see the same evidence you do. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make a statement. No, we're pushing back. I'm sick and tired of you telling me my kids got to wear a mask. No, I agree with that. So, yeah. you know, I, I was looking at this and I was mm -hmm. saying, on the one hand, what would Jesus do? He would be compliant because of the authority situation. On the other hand, he fights the spiritual forces of darkness. Which is it? And that's what nobody uh, seems to correct. know. Correct. Yeah. If what's Jesus were here... He would do the right thing because he's the only one that truly knows what's going on right now. Absolutely. Right. And so I think our problem is we don't have enough information. And depending on who you talk to and who you listen to, you get all these different yeah. inputs. Mm -hmm. And then people honestly don't know what to do. The thing I'm mad about is, is the fear they put in our older people uh, and our yes, younger people. Absolutely. I know who is they? The, the powers that be that's yeah. whoever's putting all the information mm -hmm. to the public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So wherever it comes from, however it's politicized, whatever they're doing with it, it doesn't matter to me. But I've got people that I know that are saints. They mm -hmm. love Jesus with all their heart that have not been to church in a year and a half and have no desire to go back mm -hmm. yep. because, yep. because they, are fair, they, are, they are afraid fear. of getting yeah. a disease. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that ain't right. Yep. Yeah. Got somewhere faith's got to take in too. Yeah. And, yeah. and if it's caused them to lose faith or caused them to fear more than they have faith, well, but you don't understand, I'm susceptible, I'm susceptible. Yeah. That makes me angry because that's yeah. where the devil gets a foothold. Yes, yeah. sir. And, and people... Are, are, are listening to others more than they would listen to God. Yeah. And do for you this believe parent, that the, it, it, Do you believe the virus is real? That it is a deadly real. reality? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Sure. yeah. yeah. So, so are car accidents and, and natural yes. disasters yes. and cancer, all that stuff's real too. Yeah, it's, you know, I have, I have this, we have people in our church who, you know, like you said, haven't been to church in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And at first it was, well, when they come up with a vaccine, I'll come back to church. And then they came out with the vaccine. Well, until everybody in the congregation gets a vaccine, then I'll come back to church. And then it was all these different, like you said, moving goalposts. Yes, and, yes. and, you know, my wife and I talked about this today with our kids because we have two elementary age students. And our district right now is saying masks are optional. And my wife's like, look, I'm not sending my kids to school in a mask. Mm -hmm. They're uncomfortable. Yep. My six-year-old doesn't yep. even want to wear one because mm -hmm. he just isn't comfortable with it. She says, but if they mandate it... If they say they have to have them, she says, then I'll, I'll do it mm -hmm. because yeah. at that point, I don't want my kid to be the center of attention. Right. Well, look, he doesn't, they don't have one on. The fight over masks belongs in teachers' unions and it belongs at PTA meetings and school boards. That's where the fight begins, <laughs> not in the classroom. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. Not in the classroom. Can, can, let me present a situation here. This is um, fictitious, of course, but let's say you have a local zoo. And uh, the zoo officials come on with a news conference to say that some of the uh, exotic wild animals we have have gotten loose in the community. And we want everybody to stay off the streets. And the law enforcement comes in to back this up on the news conference. Everybody, please clear the streets until we can account for all of these loose, dangerous animals. Would you be willing to say, not you personally, but would you be willing to say that, well, you know, I know my rights, I know my constitutional rights, and you go out there and you say, I have a right to be on the street regardless of what they that, say. That's true, but see, but see the, the difference here is, is if the animals get out of the zoo, there's an end game to that. As soon as we account for all the animals, the threat is gone. Right. And, right. and there's no moving goalposts because we can't be out there looking for a, a, a runaway elephant if no elephant got out. That's, right. that's the difference. In, in that scenario, there's an, there's an end game. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. There's a point we know that we've defeated it. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, first it was you know, masks, then it was vaccines, then it was, you know, it was Tuesday, then it was this, whatever. I mean, yeah. what, whatever standard you want it, it keeps moving. And, and I think once all the animals were rounded up and accounted for and they say, well, we can't let you out. We're still looking for a boa constrictor, but nobody saw one and there wasn't one on the chart. Yeah. We're not looking for anything anymore. Well, and and kind of to that point a little bit, mm -hmm. 
the survival rate for the virus for people that are in, in reasonably good health is, is upwards of 95%, maybe even higher. However, uh, the survivability of tangling with a lion <laughs> is probably pretty close to zero. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I, I yeah. respect the, the you know your point oh, there oh, about oh, uh, you it. know no oh, yeah. no no and yeah. I, I'm certainly not doing that. I mean, it's my first time here. I want to get invited back. <laughs> no. But but <laughs> there's there's a, Sorry, Chris, there, there's, a there's a difference you know with the the virus for a majority of people. Who are in good health, even even those so older true. Americans that that are you know 65, 70, 75 years old, their survivability through this virus has been pretty good, mm -hmm. uh, upwards of 90 some percent. So the, obviously the the folks that have compromised immune systems, those mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. have uh, underlying health issues, those mm -hmm. folks yes should take precautions. Mm -hmm. But but I'm old enough. To remember that that when somebody was quarantined, it was because they had an illness, not blanket quarantine, not everybody, not otherwise healthy individuals that have no evidence of of any uh, any sickness. I, I mean, it's unprecedented yeah, that, that I know of that where you would take healthy people and tell them they can't go about their lives and, and live their lives. I, I think one of the things that, that really affected people's perception of the COVID-19 virus, and definitely it's, it's real, it is legitimate, but one of the things that affected their perception was the fact that they're, they're locking everything down, they. The authorities are mm -hmm. locking mm -hmm. everything down. And even if you don't have the virus, you're supposed to isolate and stay. That I, I, I think was debilitating for a lot of people. Yeah, and, and to your point, and to the point Randy made a little bit ago, uh, the, you'll notice that the narrative has changed. For a long time, we were talking about number of deaths, which were very high, and that, that's very sad. But if you notice, <laughs> the language uh, in reporting this has changed, and now we're talking about cases with people who have tested positive. I don't even know if they have any symptoms. They may not even go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. It's just people who have tested, you know, got the swab and tested positive and didn't even know they've had it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, they're not necessarily sick. So, yeah, the cases from the Delta variant may be going up, the number of cases, but people seriously ill and dying is way down. Absolutely. Are pastors in general, you being the representative of all the pastors out there, are pastors in general pretty upset about what, COVID has done and how, it's how authorities have handled it and so far as your congregation. Yeah, I've, I've got pastor friends of mine that I'm disappointed in yes. what I feel their lack of faith in the whole process yes. is. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're being totally compliant. They're, they're being good examples of their communities. But at the same time, they've gone the other extreme. I'm, I'm thinking, and I, I've literally shook my head at a couple of them like, I can't believe you're saying that to me. Mm -hmm. So I think there's got to be a healthy balance. Mm -hmm. And I have to be very careful because I can go off the other extreme and, and you know, whatever. And I don't want to be that guy so, yeah. because I don't want to I don't want to keep somebody from getting the proper protection they need. Sure. Yeah. So I think we all have to be guarded. So that's why I came up with the word compliant, yeah. which is hard for me when I don't agree with mm -hmm. what they're telling me I think you based on the best. other side of what you hear. So yeah. if, if if you've got a great argument and you can convince me otherwise, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm teachable. I think you have to do what's best. I think as pastors, we have to do what's best for our congregations, you know, what you know, you, our demographics and our church, we have to do what's best yeah. for them. Does that mean listen to the science, the community? Not or necessarily. Or no? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You well, know, I think it's things like, uh, and I'm sure you all have become experts on live streams and YouTube uh, things and stuff like that. I would say I'm an expert. But you know how to do it. <laughs> I've learned yeah. a lot about it over the last year, year and a half, and uh, because that was what we were trying to serve and need and get sure. people in their homes, sure. and, and I've learned a lot about how to right. do all the stuff that I didn't know a year and a half ago. Now, would I would I trade that knowledge to not have gone through this? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we are where we are now because that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to serve the needs as they're presented to us. So the truth is the church has grown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though a lot of the attendance has shrunk, more people are watching more churches mm -hmm. today than sure. ever. Sure. Yeah, and I know that any of us can probably point to weeks you had two or three people, two or three hundred people watching your service. And you're like, where'd they come from? I don't mm -hmm. have that on a Sunday morning. But people are getting acclimated to watching it. So, you know, if it's spreading the gospel and that's God's whole plan, I'm cool. All right. You know, so well, but well, I think it really is important to understand yeah. there's there's a lot of people that are watching it mm -hmm. that maybe weren't paying attention to church and or God before. True. Yeah. Good point. We're going to take a break right cool. now and we'll be back in just a moment. Don't you dare go away. We'll, re we'll be right back. Bye bye.
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back, and as you can see, we're all fired up with great discussion here about the questions that you send us. It's all your fault. You get everybody all worked up around this table. <laughs> Here's another question that has come in. My son has told me he is gay. I want to love him in every possible way, but I don't believe homosexuality to be right. I need to figure out how to love him without completely pushing him away. He already wants to spend more time with people who I feel are pulling him further away from wanting to believe in Jesus. So what, what should a person like this do? They oh, want to accept wow. a child. Yeah. You know? But, but it, it's, 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 this person is in a very difficult spot. I mean, yeah. let's, let's identify that. Right. I'm, I'm talking the person who wrote the question is in a very difficult yes, spot. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think one of the things that our culture has done that, that is represented in this question is uh, we, we have replaced the perception of reality with feelings. And how I feel about things is more important than what's real. Hmm. And, uh, and I think... What's real? Well, uh, well I, think, I think what's actual. I mean, what, 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 mm -hmm. what we... What we I, I, this person... You know, if, if, if I'm assuming it's a parent child, I don't know if the yeah. question said that. Yes, it is. If, 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 it, if it was a parent going toward the child and, and all I want to do is make this person be, you know, go with societal norms, or if the child saying, you know, if I don't get full acceptance and full uh, uh, affirmation from my parents, then this relationship is over. I don't think any of that's real. Uh, I, this situation is real. I don't think the perception of it is real. And what I mean by that is, is the love that that relationship have should be able to transcend what either one of them feel. So if one of the one of the people is feeling a way that the other one has a problem with, there should be enough love in that relationship to to bridge that gap because we can love people without endorsing every single thing about them. And that's what it's uh, about. She I wants mean, to love you, the child, you, but she also wants to That's exactly to obey right. The Lord. And, and and any relationship where you love all the parts of them except for the, you know, that that's not how it works. You would love nobody if that was required. Uh, so uh, so this person, you know, why we can't agree to disagree, you know, why the, the, why the parent can't say, I, I have some serious issues with, with this, these decisions you're making. At the same time, I still love you. Doesn't mean I endorse everything you're doing. Doesn't mean I agree with everything you're doing. Yeah. And, and there is, because there is no relationship with the face of the planet. I don't care how perfect it is where one person looks at another one and says, every single thing about you is just awesome. Because that's fake. That's not reality. And for this person to think that well, I'm going to get to a point with this child where I'm just going to be happy about everything, fine. Even if tomorrow the, the child wakes up and is not feeling their homosexual feelings anymore, even if for some reason that would be gone, there's going to be something else in the relationship that's not going to be what one of them wants. It just won't be that anymore. Mm -hmm. So what, why, we have to have, what, why we have to feel love from somebody by getting endorsement to everything that we are and every feeling we have and every emotion that we experience, it's not, that's not reality. Because in reality... We have lots of things about people that we love very much that we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. and, and part of loving is, is being able to uh, overcome that. Not accept, but overcome. Anybody have any other differences? I, I was thinking when I read this, you know, I hate the sin, love the sinner. You know? The, yes, this, this is unbiblical. But that, does that mean you throw the baby out with the bathwater? Absolutely mm. not. There, like he said, you have to transcend that. You know, if, if, if that's your child, there's unconditional love. And to put a condition on it, oh, I love you when you're not homosexual, or I'll love you when you stop being homosexual, but that's not unconditional love. You know, that's again moving the goalposts. In the, in the relationship, and you can't do that. You know, you can say to them, I love you, I just can't support this decision, mm -hmm. and leave it at that. And I'm not going to enable it or empower it. No. But I'm not going to endorse it either. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think it would be a teachable moment for the parent to show the child, listen, I, I disagree with your lifestyle, I disagree with, with the, the lifestyle that you're living, but I still love you. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. um, Make I mean, that because, known. Well, I mean, you know, there there seems to be an emphasis placed on homosexuality, mm -hmm. um, where the homosexuality is the worst sin uh, possible, mm -hmm. and, and there there are a lot of reasons for that. I think why why the the church is has chosen homosexuality to be so vocal about. Um, honestly, I think one of the reasons that is is because the homosexual community is so vocal in openly flouting uh, a, a commandment. Um, however, that, that aside, um, I, I think when, when this parent looks at their homosexual son mm -hmm. uh, or their daughter that is, uh, that is hopelessly trapped in some addiction or an addiction to pornography or uh, a kleptomania. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's no short list of sins that we can fall into. And if, if a child can't look at their parent and find that unconditional love, uh, then how is that person gonna be drawn to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because we can say, Jesus loves us the way we are. Mm -hmm. He refuses to leave us that way. Mm -hmm but he loves us the way we are, even when we've committed that sin that two days ago we said we would never commit again, that that love is still there. And, and I think the, the love that uh, a parent has between a child is a model, if you will, of the love that God has for us. And, and I think as an example to that, you know, we're all pastors of churches, and I know you, you guys have never done this before, but I know there are certain moments when I look at my church and I say, you know, we'll have a service and everything will be going well and a bunch of people afterward are experiencing Jesus and everything's great. Uh, and, and I walk out thinking, gosh, I really love you guys. Other times I get to the end of the service, three people walk up to complain because there's a, there's a light out and, and it was too cold today and it was too loud and, you know, the, the, the floor wasn't swept and, and a thousand other things. And you walk out thinking, I still love you guys but I ain't feeling it quite as strong today, right? <laughs> and, 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 and I think we've all been there, you know? Not every part of every relationship makes us happy. No. And if you expect yeah. it to, you have set yourself up for disappointment. You know, this parent may be disappointed that the child has, has decided to, to pursue these interests. Mm -hmm. At the same time, still your child, but that doesn't mean you have to enable it, able, yeah. the, able the situation. Yeah. I think part of what we gotta listen to is, is you know, I, I had a come to Jesus moment in my life where um, I recognized my inability to treat a homosexual rightly and it repulsed me it made me what does sick that mean to treat a homosexual rightly what to, do you to, mean? to i mean i would i would just i was not being christ-like mm -hmm. in my response and i remember speaking in, and this I'm, I'm going back 20 years so okay. don't think this was yesterday but <laughs> 20 years ago i spoke at a youth rally in lexington kentucky and i, I made a limp-wristed joke about you know them boys out there they're you know and I'll never forget, an 18 year old girl walks in after the church and she says, I'm really glad I invited any of my homosexual friends tonight because you would have turned them off to God. Ouch. And I was like, what Ouch. is wrong with you? And so I did some research and I, I would say to most of this, there are resources out there to help a parent that finds this out. Focus on the family still has some of the best resources mm -hmm. oh, yeah. on navigating yeah. um, a homosexual lifestyle. And it's not coming from the repulsed church response that it all used to have. And I think the church has gotten much better in the last 20 years in our response and trying to accept people where they are, whatever it is they bring to the house mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, there's all kinds of sins sitting there every week and some of it's even standing behind the pulpits of our churches. Mm -hmm. We are all at a place of sin. We've got to get better. But I think for me, it was, when, it, when I think of response, my response was bad, it was ungodly. Mm -hmm. God convicted my heart. And I can honestly say to you, if, if anything, I'm almost not the other extreme. There's, I don't think there's an extreme here of showing God's love. But I want, if, if somebody knows that I know that they're a homosexual and I'm a pastor, there's automatically there's a friction. Because in their mind and in my mind, we're at odds. But the coolest thing for me is to make sure they know I'm treating them like everybody else in that yeah. room. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't care if it's your kid, your coworker, whoever it is. And, and there are those that make it hard. Sure. They flaunt it more or yeah. they're more yeah. openly yeah. whatever. And it's almost like a test mm -hmm. to see how we'll respond. Yes. They're looking oh, for reaction. Oh, oh, oh. And I yep. think kids yeah. are looking for reaction. Yeah. So, mom, your reaction should be unconditional love, period, no matter what. It's hard, but that's true of all of us. You know, when my daughter was dating a kid, I couldn't stand. I want to choke her head off, you know. Yeah. It, was the same, it was the same angst that I'm sure this mom sure. feels. If she marries this guy, it's going to be bad, you know. Mm -hmm. And 
Thank God she didn't. But, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it, I think it's true, as you said. There's a lot of situations our kid could disappoint us. But I always go back to the scripture that says, how can we love our brother, our son, uh, or how we can love God we've not seen, mm -hmm. but we can't love our brother or our son who we have seen. Yeah. This should never keep a parent from loving a kid. Disappoint, yeah, okay, maybe you're disappointed. But it should never stop you loving your kid. There's nothing that should make us stop loving our kids. No decision, bad or good, to keep us from loving our kid. Well put. Absolutely. All right, I guess we've uh, covered that subject pretty well. Okay. Another question is very simple. Is it okay to date a non-believer? That's <laughs> coming from a Christian person. <laughs> Only if you're okay? leading them to Jesus on the first date. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there, in another way of phrasing this, is there such a thing uh, as missionary dating? No, absolutely, <laughs> positively not. Very no. wary. All, all that's, that's going to lead to is a very here, disappointed divorce. Here, here's what I used to answer it with. Because you asked me that, you already know the answer. Yeah. So why are we having this discussion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're pushing the envelope with God. You're trying to say, I, I can't find a good guy, so I'm just going to go find any guy. Because it's usually the girls, the guys aren't smart enough to think about it sometimes. <laughs> you know, they're just looking for a girl that'll answer their text or their call, right. you know. But girls especially... They, they, they feel left out and they settle. And that's what I say, why would you settle for somebody less than God's very best? Mm. Well, you know, forget, don't forget the scripture. The scripture says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yeah. That's pretty serious and it's, and it's kind of a command. Do not is, is important. Mm -hmm. But I think bigger than that is why are you asking me that question? Mm -hmm. Why are you settling? Yeah. Get, get the very best you can, hopefully a godly Christian man or woman, mm -hmm. but I think that's very important. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Were you, were you going to chime in on that? I, I, I was going to exactly say what Randy said, just the, un, the idea of not being unequally yoked. You know, you, tr you can try as hard as you want to lead that other person to Jesus, but nine times out of ten, as hard as you're trying to lead them to Jesus, they're leading you the other way. Yeah. And you've got to be careful. Say, can I do want to say one thing? Sure. To that? And I don't think unequally yoked is not even about Christians. Sometimes it can be about religious backgrounds sure okay if you grew up in a, a a certain denomination that has a school our whole family is always going to that school well i want my kid to be in a different school i don't want my kid to go there i always tell the kids it may not matter today but someday it may matter mm -hmm. and and you always tend to go back to the religion and the faith of your parents so even in faith sometimes it can be difficult when two different faiths marry uh because they got an outpick, we want my mom's or your mom's. <laughs> and that can cause big problems, big problems trust me. Time. Well, we're all out of time. Yep. Thank you very much. Very good counsel, very wise counsel. We appreciate all that you've had to say, gentlemen. And uh, some good news for you and our audience. These same gentlemen will be back again next week as we continue with another round of discussions with your questions that you have sent in to be answered. So until next week, at the same time, same station, I'm Bill Harris. Be sure to join us next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>